I love it. All right. So I'm so excited you're here. This is going to be so exciting. We are officially live. This is amazing. You're amazing. <laughs> but I know you're amazing. So I want to give you your, your super shout out. You know, I'm going to do it. Um, I'm so excited, Dr. Brittany. I have known you for, I know we keep doing this and I won't, you know, you're 22. So I know this is hard to say. We've probably known each other for 20 some years, but I think you said I'm 22. I was like, I, I know I'm joking. Here. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, I feel 22. Yeah. You look it, you look oh. at those, those lashes. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, wanted, you, I had you on last year and we talked about you being an entrepreneur, a busy woman, all of that kind of stuff. And you just really highlighted it so much of finding that balance, finding, um, taking care of yourself, but really still conquering the world. And so I wanted to bring you back because I wanted us to one highlight that again, because you're still taking over the world. There hasn't been a person I met that doesn't know you yet. And so, <laughs> but I also really wanted us to focus on gratitude this week. And I wanted you to be part of that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm grateful for you, Jess. Yes. I'm so grateful. So let's just jump right into it. So first of all, hi, and tell me how you would define the word gratitude. Uh, gratitude is just taking time to be uh, cognizant and aware of things that are going right when everything seems to be going wrong. I, I feel like it's uh, just shifting your awareness to and your focus on what is going right or what you should, there's a should, what, what um, needs to be highlighted to keep you in the right headspace so that you uh, don't alienate others and you feel better about your life um, and you're grateful for your business. I think in being in business, a lot of times we resent it and uh, or see the negative things. I'm a fixer. So it's like, what's broken this week? So for me, being grateful of what's working, uh, it's been the switch for me. So, yep. I love that because you said working, what's right, all these things like happiness, right? And I, I agree with it because like you said, we can go to the woe moment. We can tell you all the things that are not going well, especially as a business owner, your mom, you have, you know, your business, every other kind of hat on. And it's like, yeah, I can tell you all the woes for sure. Yep. But for me to take that time and go, these are the things that are right is, is a big thing. Yeah. Especially with you have employees is like, uh, especially in this job market, being grateful that they're building your dream. I think I've always been cognizant of, um, that because I hire people that are smarter than I am. <laughs> I really do. Like I'm pretty smart in, in what I do, which is comedic relief and um, being a doctor. But like, other than that, like that office runs on people smarter than I am. So it's up to me to cast a vision, build the systems and then uh, hire the best people and then be profoundly batshit crazy, grateful for them. So, yeah. but I think it also takes a certain kind of mindset um, to hire people and delegate yeah. work right? Yep. Because you know, and I, you're a mom, so you get this, that your business is your baby, oh, yes. right? Mine, mine's like a raging teenager right now. Let's <laughs> move back home. <laughs> no, I'm joking. In so many ways. I, I think we talked about it last time. It's like the stage is like a kid. It's like the different stages. We talked about that last year and um, sometimes it regresses and uh, you just have to be, it's your, it's your circus and your monkeys is what I said last year. So uh, <laughs> But being grateful for the challenges because then you can take it to the next level. So it's it's always evolving. It's always changing. But just to be in it is something to be grateful for. As long as you still want to do it. It's a kicker. Yeah. No, but you mentioned two challenges. And I think that's where a lot of us, especially as entrepreneurs, get stuck, right? We see that challenge. We see that that wall. We're going, okay, well, this means I must like wipe my hands off the business. But you're telling us that, no, that means we should probably grow from it, learn from it, and keep moving. Yeah, each level gets harder. I think a lot of us think I'm a huge fan of 80s movies that tie up nice at the end. And it doesn't, it, it, it may be for a second, but it's like next play. What's I think a lot of us who own businesses, you don't stop and say like, oh, this is great or I accomplished this or take a moment to breathe and just enjoy it. For me, it's like next play. And uh, that's sort of a smack to the universe's face of not being grateful for what you have. So then the universe will take it back. No, uh, <laughs> so it's just important to pause, but like nothing, I think each level, you think each level is going to get easier because people tend to attract more materialistic things. And you think that their life is great and it's amazing, but each level is harder and brings up more challenges and it's more leveraged. So it's just more important to be grateful about the simple stuff. 
because you will lose touch with that. It's important to, again, it's the people who build your business. It's yourself uh, sometimes. So you're right. Yeah. Those challenges get hard. And I think like you said, materialistic, we think we should be grateful for the money coming in. That means that, you know, we should be grateful and, you know, I can pay for things and all this stuff. And yeah, it's a piece of it for sure, but it's not the all and be all. You mentioned yourself and your employees. Those are the ones you keep bringing up over and over, you know, in my mind, the money's going to come and go, but those relationships, man, they're going to be there through those challenges, you know? Yep. And I think that friction, I think a lot of us get into business because we're fixers. And I think that friction sometimes has us be infinitely creative and able to, again, think, how can I do this better, faster, stronger? Um, so to have, because otherwise you get bored. I mean, I would be bored if my business just was on autopilot. <laughs> uh, I love to fix stuff. So it's just important to understand that that's a gift. You know, if a patient complains for us, there's a challenge and how do we, how do we not have that happen again? You know, how do we do this better? And to thank them profusely for bringing it to our attention. We've had uh, last week, we had somebody write to me directly. And I said to the team, I'd much rather have them write me and present a, an issue and say, hey, I, I hope you're aware of this in your business because that gives us an opportunity to fix it instead of somebody just blasting you on social media. I, I was very grateful for that. Uh, I thought that was very mature uh, of them to do because they genuinely cared about my business. They cared about how we did because otherwise they would just be like, screw that place. I'm never going back. And legit, they had a they had a concern and we hadn't thought of it that way. So it's like really cool. So um, I just think it's awesome to reframe things again. It's, it's all our mind. I think that's what you teach people is our mind is like you get to choose what and assign value to the meaning of it. But um, sometimes if you can reframe and say, what's the universe trying to teach me? For me, I always feel like the universe gives me a challenge. And if I get, it's like a Mario challenge, like a Mario Kart challenge. And if I get to the next level, if I withstand that pressure, then I get to go to the next level. So if I survive that, I'm going to the next level, baby. <laughs> I love your 80s and 90s references. I love 80s. Oh my God, I'm so like an 80s girl. I used to like with patients when I was the chiropractor at Bally's, I would say, if you stump me on a one hit wonder, you get a free copay. I can't do that anymore. I, I know my one hit wonders. That's a little known fact about me. But yeah, but but I wanted to say the biggest thing with the gratefulness is like, um, I think one mistake I made as a woman business owner, I love my business, but my business fed my kids. And I think uh, speaking, if I can be one of those women in this grocery store that stops you and say it's, it goes so fast, is to be like, um, to be more cognizant of uh, being a mom, being a real mom. Uh, I was a very distracted mom. I was a very good mom. I was a very fun mom, but uh, it, it's hard to it's hard to pull yourself off of your business sometimes because it it's what feeds your kids. And I came from a working mom who came from a working mom. And as a kid, you don't understand how hard that is to spin all the plates. But if you can really take time to really consider your kids and be grateful for your kids and tell them how grateful you are. There's a book called 18 Summers, which I highly recommend to any woman. Well, you only get 18 summers with your kids. Some of us get more, uh, some get less, but it's just being cognizant of how you spend your focus and your time, I think is what's critical that I wanted to talk about this time as opposed to last year. Yeah. But I think you said a lot of things there. So one, like you said, um, you're a one-headed one. No, skin. Um, <laughs> Try me too. But you, it's taking yourself away from the business. Cause like you're saying, you know, we mentioned that the business is like a baby, but it's not the all end be all. Yes. It feeds your kids. Yes. It challenges you. Yes. You grow, but there's so much more and it's very easy. Like you said, to get distracted, right? We get really consumed over our to-do list, over the things that we are told we have to do, right? And what I'm hearing is realize what you really want to do, realize what you really have to do and everything either hire somebody for or everything will fall into place because there's so many things that go so fast. Your business goes so fast. Your family grows so fast. Life is so fast and we really lose connection from that. It's Ferris Bueller. Like you look up and <laughs> there's a quote from Ferris Bueller, like you look up and life goes fast or whatever. But um, I think the the one thing I wanted to add is who you want to be. I think like uh, I, I have a lot of experience running as a business. And sometimes since my divorce, 
uh, I really didn't have a life. Like I didn't have my own self, if that makes sense. Like I always yeah. was in a uh, leadership role or, and just developing yourself out is so critical because you'll look up, I think that's the thing you look up and, and I'm 49 and you don't really know yourself as a person outside of that role or as a mom, it's important to spend time by yourself and be grateful. That's why I used to get up at four in the morning because I'd listen to 80s hits and try to develop, you know, the small pockets of time you can carve out to remember who, who you are. So that's important as well. Yeah. So, yeah. I love that you said that because, you know, with my business being called Journeys to Yourself, you know, that's all what I'm about is finding yourself again, because like you said, we lose ourselves in so many different roles that we really put ourselves as back, back burner, my apologies, we put ourselves on the back burner. And so we, we make ourselves not a priority anymore. We say everybody is before us. My business is before my needs. My business, my family is before my wants. Mm -hmm. And you hear it all the time. You go, how many times do we travel? And the first thing they tell you is you have to put your own mask on first, yeah. right? But as women, we're like, ah, it doesn't apply to me. It's everybody else besides me. Right. And what we're doing is like you said, you're a mom, you're showing your kids, right? You lead by example. You're a leader, right? You're a boss, you're a manager, you're owner. You lead by example. And you're telling them everybody's before you, you have to be a working mom. You put everything before you. And what you're telling me is that you really then lose everything in the sense of you miss out on memories and moments. You miss out on yourself growing. Yes. This business challenges. Yes. Your mom challenges you, but what are you really doing for yourself? And we, we can lose that. It's, it's really hard to do it easy to do, but hard to bring ourselves back to. Yeah. Like for me, I would just continue to work on it and then become a martyr. And I, I hate that word, but like me and not my, if me in an anxious state is not a pretty thing. So I've learned to do others like yeah, Friday, I had a challenge with my team and uh, I have a second business that I'm working on. So I ended up being like, I am no good to you guys right now. I'm going to go take a shower, like midday break frame and like do something crazy. Taking a shower for me in midday is crazy and bake some cookies because, and I'll come back to this because it doesn't make sense for me to burn myself out and elevate my blood pressure. It's better just to walk away, get some space, get some time away from it, and then regroup and, and go back when you're ready instead of just uh, sucking it up and not saying anything. I think it's me and me being a martyr is like, I could have saved years doing that of like everybody's first. That's the quickest way that you'll burn yourself out. And a lot of people are depressed and wonder why they're depressed or anxious because you're last because you don't matter and that's the biggest thing I have a thing my daughter made it for my desk it says you are enough because like you you don't matter and you don't and you don't feel like you have any worth in the world because everybody else you want to keep the peace and have everybody else come first and that's the, it's easy to do in a business to lose yourself so it's important it feels selfish but I think you teach that it's not selfish it's it's necessary to keep your business going to, why why have a business if you can't enjoy it like you can have all the money in the world and you cannot enjoy it. So you, you hit on so much. I think for me, what I'm hearing is that like, like you said, when I start to say that I'm, my boundaries don't matter. My standards don't matter. What I want doesn't matter. My needs don't matter. And I'm pushing myself down and down. It's like, well, yeah, I'm isolating myself. I'm making myself depressed. I'm pushing me down. I'm saying, oh, you can walk over me. I'll still show up tomorrow. I'll drain myself over. Right. It's, it's, so crazy. it's so crazy because it's like, I don't think that that's what we want. You know, I had a situation a couple of years ago where one of my, my team was acting in a way that wasn't great. And I hated walking into work. I hated it. Mm -hmm. And I had a coach say to me, you're going to let people that were on the job for a year, destroy your dream of 20 years. Like you're going to let them. And I was like, I used an expletive. I said, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. So it's like, you have to remember it's hard to stand up. It really is hard. It takes, and if you, if you're everything, all your batteries are depleted, it's hard to stand up, but sometimes your back's against the wall and that's all you have yeah. is to be your best ally for yourself. And, and remember, I think we, as I said, we do more planning on vacations and stuff like that, than we do our own life of what, what do you want? And that's my last year was the hell yes year. And it's like, if, if it wasn't a hell yes, cause a lot of us are like lukewarm where it's like, Oh, I'll take it. I don't want it anymore. My life has is full enough. It doesn't have room for mediocre. So yeah. So I guess we, you know, because we're coming to the end and I want us to hear because I feel like we're highlighting all the importance, right? We're saying that it's needed to practice gratitude. It's needed to show up for yourself. These things are so needed. And we're talking about 
it brings you more joy, it brings you those challenges, brings you growth, brings you different perspectives. But the biggest question is now, well, how? How do I start to show up for myself? Like you said, and you've been in this boat, I've been in the boat of being depleted myself, right? We've all been in that burnout stage. So how, what's that first step for you that said, okay, I'm going to dip my toe into this and go, I'm going to do this. What was that first step for you to start practicing showing up for yourself? Yeah. Like a couple of years ago, I could not stop crying at all behind the scenes. And everybody's like, your life is perfect or whatever. And for me, it got to a breaking point where I found that hell yes thing where I made a list. I took a eight and a half a, a notebook paper put a line said, I need to stop. This is causing me to suck my energy. Like I think of it like your phone battery. And I'm like, these things are sucking the battery. And even though I looked at the list and it's like staring down, you know, this big mountain of like, oh my God, I'm going to embarrass myself if I quit. It's, it, it got to be, I wouldn't say life or death, but it was like, I felt like I was like at a breaking point. So if you make a list of 10 things you need to stop doing and 10 things you need to start doing more of, my original list had two things on it. It was Barnes and Noble and Longwood Gardens. That's all I could think of that would bring me joy. Uh, I got some more staples on there now. I'm joking. But um, but the, the things like taking the rocks off your back of what you should do, I think starting there of this is not fun for me anymore. Maybe it was fun for me before. Like for me, it was a lot of board memberships. And it was like, I did it. I tagged it. So I tried it, been there, done there, got the t-shirt, but it's time for it to go. You know, I have other things to do. So just ch check your gut in terms of what feels good to you and what doesn't and get rid of what's not serving your best life. And then once you have some space, you can dream, put yourself in a new situation. I went to Italy, which was my top bucket list. Obviously we all can't go to Italy, but like just being in that space and creating the life that you want, you know, instead of what everybody else wants, it's, it's easy to fall into, oh, my daughter thinks I should do this, or my partner thinks I should, what the hell do you want? Because people in your life who deserve to be in your life want what's best for you. And if they don't, they're not supposed to be in your life. Yeah. That's the problem right there. But like, that's a hard pill to swallow. Oh, Yeah. But I'm all about the list though. I'm all about the list because- well, This is the easiest thing. Five things. Get rid of it. this. This pisses me off. I don't like this anymore. This is a, do it. And, and, and sit through the, for me, I took a shot, rapid fired that bad boy right down. And it was, it was hard to brace for those emails that come back to, you know, for somebody to fight for you to stay on the board or stay in this group or whatever. And it's like, no, I've made my decision. And I'm going to fill it up. The life is a vacuum. It'll fill up with, but you have to be intentional about what you fill it up back with. And for me, that's extreme self-care of like treating yourself by the person who loved you most. For me, it was my aunt, my grandmother. Like, how would they treat me? You know, I'll make myself a nest on the couch or I'll make myself, I've started making tea for myself every night and reading something inspirational or stretching or whatever brings you joy. Um, replace stuff that's bad with good. And you'll start to see that, that shift. So that's how I started. Uh, and I think the biggest thing is writing that list, like you said, is quote unquote easy, right? It's something that I'm, I'm able to do. It's not something that's completely unrealistic that I can't do. Everybody has a, a notebooks paper somewhere, you know, and just writing that down. I feel like that's kind of one of the things that I started on as well as I just, I was like, what do you want? Yeah. What do, what you, do you want? want? It's like the notebook. What, yeah. do you want? what do you want? Right. And it, for me, I actually, it was like that cry laugh where I was, what do you mean? You don't know. It was you, like you said, you wrote two things down. I was writing that wrong going, you really can't think of anything else. But like you said, when it came to my partner, when it came to my, my sister, when it came to my brother, who my best friend, I could write their list down blindfolded. Oh, I got you. Got, or they want this. They need this. But when it came to me, I just sat there dumbfounded going, really? Yeah. You can't think of something. You can't yeah. think of something. Yep. And if I'm that was my. Yeah. You can't think straight. It's yeah. like you don't see joy in anything. But like for some people, even if you make the list and you look at it and you don't act on it, at least you have an awareness. Do it again. Do it again. Do it until you are brave enough or you're sitting in that meeting. And you're like, dude, I don't want to do this anymore. And you look around, it's like it's your life. Like, like you only get so much time. Time to me is more at 49 is more important than money. How I spend my time, what I allow in my space is 10 times more important than money. To, it's, it's not, I keep saying it's not worth my peace, 
more being more busy, yeah. being more, you know, having more offices or whatever. If it costs me my peace, I don't want it. All right, I'm writing that down. Not worth my peace. That's it. That's it. That's the, that's the line of the day. I'm that's it. Not worth my peace. Man, that's that's it. But I think something else that you said too that I love, it's the awareness, right? A lot of times we get, especially when you're at that low, yep. it's that action step that gets like the oh, well, I, I can't make that move. I can't make that move. I can't leave the board meeting. I can't quit my job. I, I can't leave this relationship. Yep. It's fine. You're you start to plot. It. You start to plot. You start, how do I make this happen? How, if this was easy, how do I make this happen? Like, if wow. it was easy, how do I make this happen? And you'll start to get, to the, and the universe will conspire to help you. Something will come down the pike where it's like, hey, I'm hiring for this job or, hey, I have this opportunity for you. It'll open if you allow yourself. You don't have to act on the list. It's just an awareness of where your battery is sucking you dry yeah. and how you can recharge it. And I know you keep using the word universe. So someone that's not at, at that mindset of using the word universe, it's really, you're just opening the ear up to different signs. Like you yep. said, if I wanted that trip to Italy, if I wanted that, what I really wanted was to be, do something with myself. I really wanted to take my daughter somewhere. What I really wanted. And those opportunities are so going to start to come more to the forefront, yep. right? You're going to start awareness. to see awareness. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. So whether you use the word universe, whether you use the word a spiritual name, wh whatever the case may be, when you start to create that awareness, you start to see more of the signs and more of the opportunities. And You're more open to those away. Mm -hmm. It is just like that river is just opening that ocean, whatever this you, you can. Because you said what you wanted. Like I, a lot of people poo poo the secret, but like half of it is decide what you want. Because otherwise, everything would come to you. It's like when you buy a car, you start seeing the car everywhere you go. It's yes. where you put your awareness, where your attention goes, everything flows. That sounds really weird. Oh, but I love that. I love that. I did a little rap on your podcast. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Was that a one hit wonder? Should I like look that one up? <laughs> I'll, I'll just go by one name, Brandy. <laughs> that was popular in the eighties. Just been a prince. Oh God. But so if someone's listening, right? And obviously I, I'm taking notes from talking to you. So obviously I know other people are. If there's one nugget out of this whole, you know, uh, segment that we just talked on, what is the one thing you want everybody to take away? Care about yourself. I know that sounds so selfish, but like you matter. Uh, please don't forget. That's where I, I got lost. I, I got lost in uh, living the life that you we described was, is the quickest way to um, to drive yourself where you're depressed and anxious and uh, life. I could have, I had everything. I had literally materialistically everything, and I wasn't happy. It's it was until I started discovering and got more things on my right side of my list of stuff that brought me joy. Uh, you matter. And until you decide personally, not what your partner or your mom or your daughter or your son want you to do, go back to what you used to like to do, you know, before all these people existed and figure out what, even if it's listening to music that you like to inspire you to get in the headspace. Um, for me, it's take two, it takes two uh, by Rob Bass will surely give me all the goals that I want. Like I can remember who the hell I was. And I think remembering who the hell you are and that you matter and that um, you're enough. So, but you, you're a great creator of the universe. Everybody is a great creator. I always say I'm a great manifester. You can manifest anything you want, but you have to be clear on what you want first. Otherwise you're not going to get it. I, I love that. So now someone's listening and they have all the nuggets and they fell in love with you, which is obviously which oh. I wanted to showcase. They're going to fall in love with you. Where can someone follow you? We well, you know, tell us a little about what you do as your business and where people can follow you. So for my chiropractic business, it's Experience Chiropractic PA because there's other experience, but we're in Wayne. Uh, my second business is What You Don't Expect and The Bloom Philosophy. So I have three businesses. Uh, the other business is webinars for MDs, OBGYNs, midwives, anybody licensed to take care of pregnancy associated with my book. So one of those places, please uh, look me up on TikTok and laugh at my dancing uh, and, or us hanging out with my car, making TikToks. Um, we have a lot of fun in both places, but you can find me there. And if you're listening to this on, uh, you know, wherever you listen to this, I do have the links for her LinkedIn. I do have your links for your book as well. Um, so, but I, again, I just want to say thank you so much for, you know, everything that you do in general, all the support that you've ever given to me but also just coming back on here. I know you're, you just claimed three successful businesses and you still made time for me. So thank oh, you. I love you. I love your whole family. So <laughs> <It's true. laughs> 
Shout out to Mark again. I have to do it. Sorry. <laughs> I love your brother so much. Every time. It's like a joke. It's like, you can do it. It's the same thing. But say hi to Mark. <laughs>